What is up everybody? This video is going to serve two purposes. One to show you how my head gasket's holding up, which it is holding up great so far, knock on wood. Two, to show you how to replace the water recirculation pump on the Mercruiser 3.0. Hi, I'm Dale, and this is Dale of All Trades. I'm constantly finding myself having to repair something, install something, or find out the hard way that something just isn't worth the money. So I figured I'd take you along for the ride, and hoping along the way to inspire you to try your hand at some repairs yourself. You can expect to see repairs, reviews, how-tos, and anything in between. A special thanks to anyone who has already subscribed. Please consider subscribing. The more the merrier in this journey. So let's figure out what's going on now and get to it. I kind of feel like I'm putting new windshield wipers on a broken windshield. I'm kind of working backwards here, but if you haven't seen my last video as to why I keep putting money into this not-so-worthy engine, just go ahead and click here on the information card and watch my previous video on repairing the head gasket for the second time this season. So what I've been noticing is a little bit of a squeak coming from the engine while the engine's running. I did a little bit more digging. I took the belt off and spun the water pump by hand, and you can hear that the water pump is on its way out. So I'm going to be proactive and replace it now so I don't get stranded out on the water later. And before I get into that, I do want to explain how the cooling system works on an inboard-outboard system like this. So you have your water recirculation pump right here. This water recirculation pump works like a water pump would on a car. It circulates water throughout the engine and then pushes it back out into the lake, keeping the manifold and the block cool at all times. Without this pump operating properly, your engine is more than likely going to overheat. You also have a water pump on the outdrive called the water impeller. Now, the water impeller pump pulls water from the lake through these fins and pushes it up the outdrive and into the engine, where the water circulation pump does the rest of the work. So between these two pumps, they serve a critical role in the cooling system. Okay, now that we're up to speed on how a cooling system works on an inboard-outboard boat, we can get started on this project. Okay, before you get too carried away tearing stuff apart on this, you're going to want to start by draining the block, unless you want a watery mess all over the front of the engine and possibly on your carpet. The first thing you're going to want to do is loosen the alternator so you can take the belt off. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove this pulley. Before I go any further, I will try to spin this so that you can hopefully hear the noise it's been making. Hopefully that's getting picked up on the microphone. Then it is four bolts and the water pump will remove. Take care in noting where the bolts came from as some are different sizes. Also, side note. You may still have a little bit of water come out of the block when you remove the water pump, even though you drain the block. I believe the very bottom of this is actually going to be a hair below the drain plug. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
unfortunately this fell out off camera. I had to use a rubber mallet to get it off. This is definitely the water pump from 1989. And if you're wondering what it looks like without the pump, there is cylinder number one. You are gonna get water out when you pull it. Now the next step is clean that gasket off. I'm going to use heat resistant Permatex silicone to put mine back on. Yes, I know it's probably not considered right, but we all know the history of this engine, so I'm just gonna slap it together with that. All right, you know what's next. Red RTV time. Also, if this video is helping you, don't just come to my channel and steal. Take what you want and leave. And never come back and see me again. Please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Comment below if you have any questions about this procedure. And I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Usually only takes a day. I have plenty of videos like this one and plenty of videos not like this one. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. And I hope to see you again. Now let's slap this water pump in. Okay, you do not need it this thick. I got carried away. But it's going to work anyway. So... I'm going to slap it in. And I got a mess on my finger. Shut up and sit down. Water hose hooked up, time to start this up, check for leaks, and verify that the engine is still running perfectly with my band-aid fix. for not putting out an actual video of this thing running on the lake and having some fun with it. That being said, as you can see, my Band-Aid fix is still holding together strong. I hope it makes it the rest of the season and honestly indefinitely until I can get a replacement engine for this bad boy. If this video helped you out, please consider hitting that subscribe button and bell icon so you know when I post more stuff and hit that like button while you're at it. Leave any comments below, and as always, any parts I use during this project, I will have in the description section of the video below, and a link as to where to purchase it. This particular water pump came from Amazon.com. That wraps up this project, and I will see you in the next video.